Everything around us, the land, the warmth, the sounds and the smells, it all becomes imbued in us, an inseparable part of our memories. It becomes nostalgia. And for us, it is nature that forges the strongest bond to the fond times of our past. On a sunny March morning, Robbie, Brian, Nicole, and I enjoyed a quiet breakfast together. Then we loaded up the car and headed south to Kentucky. It was a long drive full of plenty of napping and breaks for gas and hydration. What'd you get? It's a mystery fluid. It's pink colored. <laughs> <laughs> but before long, we would be at our destination land between the lakes. Eventually, we arrived and parked at the North Welcome Station parking lot. Here, we got our gear ready and bumped into one of our viewers, Lofton, and his friend Garrett, who told us about a great campsite by the lake. Do you have a shout out you want to give somebody? Uh, Bree. Hi, Bree. How you doing? You're missing out. You came to death. <laughs> Never would expect to see you guys here. <laughs> the whole loop was on. And before we headed out, they gave us a heads up on a good campsite along the trail. I'll be right here. Okay. Just as we started, Andrew had already found something interesting. So we're going to make a hearty dinner tonight, so I'm going to collect some chives. There's a huge patch of chives just growing right in this lawn. So. And you can cut these and they'll grow right back. <laughs> oh, it's going to be good. For this hike, we would be doing the canal loop trail, camping early on, then hiking the rest of the loop, and camping one more night. At the beginning of the trail, we had to double check our plan. This is us, right? <laughs> oh, you might be right. Oh yeah, because this is North Paved Trail. We found our way and started hiking, and it was a huge relief. Yeah, after being cooped up in that car for four hours or whatever it was, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> this is like after being cooped up for three months in the house, I'm excited to be outside. Some western chorus frogs croaked, signaling the coming of spring. More and more, I love this type of environment during this time of year like that beautiful early spring where it's still cool and there aren't any bugs, but the first signs of life are back. The nostalgic atmospheric sounds of frogs just burping. <laughs> we hiked further into the evening sun and came to an opening with power lines. Up ahead, we saw some actual wildflowers popping up. So just because of the ephemeral nature of spring, we've only seen these a few times on Adventure Archives, but there's some flowers growing out of the leaf litter called cutleaf toothwort. They're very pretty to look at, but actually if you were starving, you could eat these in a pinch. They taste kind of like wasabi root or mustard. Unfortunately, we're not supposed to pick any plants here, so we're just gonna leave them alone, but they are quite nice and pleasing to the eyeballs. <laughs> The trail descended into a low-lying area with winding creeks. Then it wound back uphill, and we caught our first glimpse of the lake through the trees. The perfect weather and signs of spring had us feeling euphoric. Guess what I'm about to say. This is what you live for? <laughs> yes, this is what I live for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes I really prefer this environment to like super grand ones even. I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So there's no intimidation about it. It's just very welcoming. Yeah, it's super familiar and just, especially with like bushcrafty type skills, I feel like I can just do whatever, you know? Yeah. Up ahead was an even better view of the lake. 
Okay, this is what I am looking forward to, man. It's camping right Whoa. next to this lake. Wow, this is so cool. I know. <laughs> this is cooler than I ever thought it would be. Yeah. It's so blue, too. This must be the, uh, the lake that we're between. <laughs> yeah. We saw a family having a picnic on the beach in the distance and got even more excited about camping on the shore. We weren't ready to settle down just yet, but we found a path to a rocky beach and decided to explore it. I decided to bring a more sturdy chair this time with me. So, just brought a full stool. <laughs> now I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> Along with the stool, there were other interesting things to find on the beach, like perfect skipping stones. There were also a variety of shells and rocks scattered all about this interesting landscape. Yeah, it's always fun to comb beaches and like find all the little bits that lie around on the beaches. But there's like all these little shells lying around, like these beautiful little unicorn shaped shells. There's like these weird nodules of iron, I think. Is this like rusted iron? It could just have a lot of iron in the, the water. It's interesting though. In a low-lying area, there was garbage everywhere, but not because of irresponsible hikers. It had all been washed in by the tide. Which is kind of something I think a lot about. It's important to leave no trace, and obviously you should never litter, but on some scale, the problem is much bigger than just how individuals behave, you know? Yeah. As hikers, we often fixate on thoughtless people who damage the trails we love or leave litter at campsites. But just as everything is connected in our ecosystem, everything in the developed world is connected as well. We can pick up litter, but somewhere up the chain, that litter is being produced as cheap disposable products or wasteful overpackaging. We like to look for individuals we can point a finger at, but sometimes there are broader problems that need to be addressed collectively. In the distance, a barge chugged along slowly in the water. We felt just as slow, so we checked our progress on the map. Yeah, I think we've only done about one mile. And I think that one campsite the guy was talking about was maybe another two miles at most. I say we just keep hiking and then see if we find anything good. Honestly, like all of this looks amazing to me, so I don't really need a picnic table or anything. We continued on while there was still sunlight out. The sun had started setting, transforming into a glowing golden orb. lake surface reflected the golden light like a mirror. As the sun set, Robbie and Andrew wanted to stay behind to capture it, while Nicole and I decided to keep hiking. So I think we're gonna go ahead and scout for our campsite. Okay. Okay? okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Eventually, dust came, and with it, a surprising chill. Is it just me, or did the temperature drop really quickly? Yeah, super fast. That is crazy. Yeah, it was almost like kind of hot earlier. Now it's feeling like winter again. This is classic dusk hiking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a sign here. Three sisters. Do you see like three mountain tops or something? I don't know, the three sisters I know of is like the corn, beans, and squash thing, you know? You talking about like succotash or something? Well, it's like a Native American thing. They would grow these three crops together. The beans would like bring rich soil and then climb on the corn. The squash would like cover the ground. Oh man, don't talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> we turned the corner around the hill and came to another stunning sunset view. Look at all those colors too, it's like incredible. Every color of the rainbow in the sky and the water. I can't help but feel nostalgic every time we come out to a place like this. And it reminds me so much of when we first started backpacking. Looking at these views, you're just reminded of what it was like to see that for the first time. Yeah, a sunset, if nothing else, will always remind you how wondrous nature can be for the first time. Even this Midwestern landscape with a sunset is still blowing our minds, you know? Like we've seen, the highest mountains and the lowest valleys and the creamy centers. And <laughs> still this creamy sunset is enough to get us super excited. I think it's just a good reminder that like, nature is continually awe-inspiring no matter how many times you see it. Ahead, we came to a small overlook. What is this? Maybe know. this is the Three Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. This would be the Three Sisters, but it could be. Do you guys find something? Whoop! Oh, whoop whoop! Keep going. Okay. So I just heard Brian and I just see this perfect silhouette of them with their hammocks set up right on the lake shore. This looks awesome. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> This feels like it's out of a dream. Like <laughs> It is a dream that you could have, you know, like you're separated and then you come to a campsite and they're already there. Yeah, it's like just the weird haziness of the colors and also like the perfect place for the campsite. It seems like something my brain would imagine. Yo, this is a great campsite. Look how big it is. Wow. Good work. Nice little setup you got here. Thank you, thank you. Got the sunset on one side of the moonrise on the other. Wow, yeah, we might just walk right down to the beach. Oh my God, this is one of the best campsites we've ever been to. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, there's already firewood? Oh yeah. Wow, I'm surprised no one else took this too. Yeah, because there was definitely a group right in front of us. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's probably too close to the beginning of the trail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we took too long, so <laughs> they were already long gone. This was one of those campsites you always wish for on a backpacking trip, and we were happy to have found it. As the others set up their shelters, I started gathering wood for a fire. And the whole time, we had a front row view of the lake. As dusk turned to night, I continued scrounging up tinder for our fire. But the campsite was surprisingly scarce where that was concerned. So a little lesson in camping. Earlier there was a ton of really good uh, tinder. Tons of tulip poplar everywhere. I did collect a little bit of tulip poplar bark earlier. Uh, there were like grapevines and things like that. Now there's not a lot of tinder, but there is a fallen log over here full of punky kind of rotten wood. And that's actually really good tinder as long as it's dry, which it seems like it is. The problem with it is usually when you find it, it's still kind of moist. Um, there's also a lot of dried leaves everywhere, so I think between all the materials we can scrounge up, we can still get a pretty good fire going. But again, if I had collected more of this stuff earlier, it wouldn't even be a problem, so. But let's get collecting. So this white rot, punky wood will just like break off so easily and it feels really spongy to the touch, but you have to be careful for 
some of the pieces because there's still moisture retained in a lot of this. Even though it's like flaking so much? Oh some, yeah. There's some moisture in there? Yeah, yeah. You can you can tell there's some moisture retained in there because I think it's like a sponge that just soaks it up, but there's some pieces on the ground. Well, some of these are wet, but I'm gonna try my best to pick the dry pieces and we can crumble that up and mix it with the rest of our tinder and that should spark pretty good. There's also a variety of fallen oak branches that are kind of dead and there's a bunch of dried leaves on them. Leaves are not my favorite source of tinder. A lot of people think of starting a fire and they think dry leaves, but they actually don't catch very easily. But again, I think if we, take some of the dry ones off and once we get a flame going, if we throw them on and maybe break them up a bit, uh, they'll keep the flame going so that our kindling can catch. So I'm just gonna collect some of these too. We finished setting up camp and then gathered around the fire ring. After Brian and Nicole cleaned out the fire ring, I made a platform of wood and prepared the tinder. Right, so there's actually sharp rocks near this fire pit, so I'm gonna try using that to spark this. Yeah, it works really well. Wow. It's got a nice perfect curve on it. Now, what do you think your chances are in regards to getting this punky wood to actually ignite? Uh, I think it'll take some time, but I think we can get it, I don't know, 75. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the sparks are going down. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the knife. Okay. Well, That's really fast compared to <laughs> Leaves, not great for sparking, but it's good for keeping the flame going. I think we got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. What does the peanut gallery think? <laughs> Nine and a half out of ten. <laughs> Nine and three quarters out of ten. What were the deductions for? <laughs> <laughs> the time failed first the time. time spent waiting. <laughs> the time spent waiting for the warmth. Yep. It's like every twenty minutes is another point one. <laughs> Some of the pieces are softer, but cut your mouth open. <laughs> I like that texture of plastic. <laughs> um, so tonight, I thought that it would be good for a winter trip to have some beef stew. Um, nice and hearty meal, and uh, it'll give us a good bit of energy for tomorrow since we have a big hike ahead. I'm going to fry up the beef pieces after coating them in some flour and pepper. Then I've got some beef stock, potatoes, carrots, celery, onion, a little bit of red wine to add a little Zing. Red wine, wow. Yeah. Red wine too, this is luxury. Yeah, hey, hey, if I'm cooking, I'm making it a good meal. Whenever I've made stew, I've just thrown whatever I have in my pantry and freezer into the pot. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the point of flouring the beef? So flour in general will thicken um, a soup. When you fr like kind of brown the outsides of the beef, it will hold in the, the juices and the flavor. But I don't know, my mom just always taught me to coat it in beforehand. Maybe it's just for the thickening, I don't know. After coating the beef in flour, Nicole cut up some small potatoes, then readied her portable camping grill. All right, so I'm gonna add the oil to the pan now that I've floured up the beef. Just get this nice and hot in there so we can get our roux going.
After the beef sizzled for a while, Nicole added beef broth, and I kept the flames going in the meantime. Next, we added some red wine. As it came to a boil, we added potatoes, carrots, onion, celery, and the wild chives we had collected earlier. This was going to be a great meal. Once again, I'm going to be eating better while camping than I do at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. I'm worried that I made too much, but then I remember I'm here with you guys, so <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Trust me, none of this animal goes to waste. <laughs> As the stew cooked, Brian and I went to stargaze by the lake. It was a quiet, moonlit night. Eventually, the stew had cooked and thickened up, and it was time to eat. Mmm, that meat is tender. <laughs> Everybody, or dink it, 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 Oh, wow. The carrots are actually kind of sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is better than if I had attempted this at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Good job, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> Thomas, you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so happy. This is the best beef stew I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> no, beef stew is, like, my go-to in the winter. Yeah. Mm. Like if I just want to sit down and curl up and read a book and mm. have something warm, this is my go-to. Mm. Oh, I'm glad there's so much too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no chance of there being leftovers though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zero percent chance. It's like uh, Thomas Peasant or whatever. What's that book by Charles Dickens called? <laughs> Oliver Twist or Yeah, something about Oliver Twist and <clears throat> begging for scraps. <laughs> okay. I might need some chunks too. You know? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like someone could go to like a five-star French restaurant every weekend and have some sort of like beef bouillon stew. <laughs> 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 but I can guarantee they have not felt as happy as I do right now just eating this like campfire stew. I mean this is a good stew too, yeah. but circumstances just make it all the better. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's so, three carrots and one potato. Yeah. I'm good. So. I can't believe we ate all of that. God, we demolished it. <laughs> <laughs> two onions trying to hide here. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you could hide from me, eh? <laughs> Okay, do you guys want Rice Krispie Treat desserts? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably like some <laughs> addict. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. He pulls out his Rice Krispie Treat. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> mm. it'll, mm. it'll warm you up by the chewing. <laughs> 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 We're gonna sleep good tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, what a good night. Before heading to bed, we all headed back to the lake to take in the night sky. The moon was shining bright, and the stars twinkled above. Whenever I see the night sky like this, especially right now, and you see like the moonlight illuminating everything, it just gives me this like weirdly nostalgic dream-like feeling. And I remember I, I got the same feeling a long time ago when I was just starting camping. I was obsessed with watching these time lapses of the Milky Way. Someone made a video of the Milky Way over like some lake in Japan set to piano music. And I was just so obsessed with like seeing that for myself. I don't know, we've had this sort of experience so many times where we're like on a lake shore at a campsite at night. But every time, it's just still so surreal. This is an interesting one, too, because there's a town over there. And usually you don't see civilization so close by. Yeah. <clears throat> the lights don't even bother me. Yeah, Knowing that there's nice. civilization over there, I still feel so secluded. You know, you talking about looking up in the night sky made me think of this quote. Though many people feel small, whenever he looks at the night sky, he feels very big because he knows that he came from those stars. Yeah. We lingered just for a little bit longer around camp before getting ready to sleep. I think we're gonna be good. 
Arrivederci. This is going to be good. Good night. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs>The next day was perfectly clear and sunny. The wind had picked up in the morning and the lake rippled with lively waves. an hour <laughs> yeah i finally like looked outside to see it and it was just like it was way in the distance too and it was barely moving just like maybe i've talked about this before but i just can't get over the fact how many people just sacrifice so much what are they even hauling and why were they hauling it in the middle of the night somebody was on that boat having to do that yeah yeah and what a sacrifice they've made for us to have I don't know, rice or whatever the heck they're all. <laughs> <laughs> they were almost certainly not hauling rice. <laughs> That's funny. <I> <laughs> uh, later this morning, it was, it sounded like pitter-patter on the tarp, but I think that was just the wind. Yeah. Because I thought for sure, oh no, it's raining. Oh. But I stepped outside and it was not. It was a beautiful sunny day. Yeah, yeah. Somehow I'm still so cold. How come I'm so cold and it's still so sunny? <laughs> now it was time for breakfast. And for that, we needed a fire. All right, so today we are gonna make something called ash cakes, which <laughs> about as delicious as they sound. <laughs> in here I've got some flour mixed with salt and baking soda. Even though you're supposed to be extra precise when you bake, I kind of just eyeballed it. <laughs> but these are sort of a cake that like people in the 18th century would make, you know, pioneers in the forest or whatever. But they're called that because you cook them right on the hot ashes, so. And actually I've been told that the baking soda, when it's cooked on the ashes, actually like gets a really unique and good flavor, but I barely put any baking soda in there because I wanted to be safe and not make it taste like laundry or something. <laughs> so I'm also gonna add some raisins into here. Brian will hate that, but I mean, it'll actually give it some good flavor. Brian doesn't like raisins? I don't think so. <laughs> Ryan, do you like raisins? <laughs> no response. <laughs> I think he just groaned or something. <laughs> oh, good. Looks like I added a good amount of water. Now it was time to knead the dough. Once it was kneaded, I split the dough into four pieces. In the meantime, I made some oatmeal for breakfast while Andrew readied the fire. So instead of dealing with natural tinder, I'm just, well, I mean, it is natural technically, but I'm using the stick of fat wood because I've already proven my manliness. <laughs> Hopefully the wind doesn't blow all this stuff away though. Hold on. This would be really easy to light. It's just, if I make super fine shavings, the wind blows them all away immediately. So I gotta like, I don't know, I might have to shelter this from the wind and then light it that way. So maybe I can get over like here. Once I blocked the wind, it was much easier to light the fat wood. There you go. All right, all right, there you go. 
Thankfully, the kindling took to the flames pretty easily. Hopefully, we are not too ill-prepared. It looks like it's catching, though. Yeah, we got that. The miracle of fatwood, I love it. <laughs> So basically what we're wanting eventually is a nice hot bed of embers, just really hot white ashes basically. And that'll be perfect for cooking the aptly named ash cakes on. <laughs> uh, but before then, I guess we can boil the water or something. Today, we had Colombian coffee that came in a bag that doubled as a kettle. Oh, whoa. That is super, wow. That goes down so smooth. There's like no sourness at all. That's really good coffee. Well, that's really good. All right, so we've burnt our fire down into a nice hot bed of ashes. I was just continually feeding it small sticks so they would burn down and add to the heat. And now we're just going to put these directly onto the ashes. Just like that. I think people are a little hesitant to cook right in the ashes because they think like there's going to be all this dirt and grit in it. But it rubs off pretty easily and I mean as far as germs like it all gets cooked away obviously so. You can cook the ash cakes right on top of the ashes or you can bury them under the embers so you don't have to flip them. Wow, it's so hot. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like much, but it's really, there's a lot of heat here. Have you had these before? No. I like trying new stuff, though. So, how do you know when they're done? I think you just kinda eyeball it. <laughs> It'll probably come out a little bit charred, but I mean, you want it to go all the way through, too. The nice thing about chopsticks is it's really, really easy to move the ashes around. A lot easier than like having to finagle with two sticks or something. Well, I guess it is two sticks, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so are they overdone? Are they still doughy on the inside? Who's to say? <laughs> that one doesn't look too great, but I know it uh, doesn't look great right now, but if we give it a little brushing off, it'll look slightly better. <laughs> this one has an active ember on it. <laughs> the cakes looked a little bit inedible from the outside, so Andrew volunteered to take the first bite. All right. I'm gonna give one a go. Hey, it looks pretty good on the inside. Looks like real bread. It smells like legit bread. That's actually pretty, it's quite a nice smell. Yeah, tastes good to me. <laughs> now to see what people with real taste buds <laughs> think. It's like a breaking open a geode or something. Yeah, the inside looks quite nice. Oh, it really breaks cool. perfectly. That actually tastes really good. No, it's got that same feeling of eating a pizza crust at Sbarro's Pizza in the mall. Oh yeah. Only with some raisins in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you taste that like weird ashiness? I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the baking soda or the ash, but it gives it like a unique flavor. I wonder if that ashiness is because of the ash. Well, I... <laughs> the ashiness tastes like the public restroom at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually like it. I only put a tiny bit of baking soda. These actually fluffed up a bit too. You honestly cook this perfect as well. There's no doughiness to it. It's actual bread texture. It's yeah. good. Don't thank me. Thank the ash. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Three out of four <laughs> archivers agree. <laughs> My expectations were very low. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get them. <laughs> now filled up with ash cakes, we tore down camp and packed up our gear.
We doused the fire and packed up the grill, then went to enjoy the lakeshore in the morning sunlight. And around the beach were signs of past animals in the area. I found these two random bones in the soil, but that was like way up on the hill over there. They kind of look like fish bones to me, I don't know. I wonder if like a hawk swooped up a fish and then ate it and dropped it. Mm. And also just right on the beach, I also found this, uh, this is definitely the spinal column of a fish. I know that because I've eaten fish. <laughs> a lot of hawks getting tasty meals. <laughs> we also saw this seagull feather and a rock with a small fossil. Now, we left the campsite, which turned out to be the Allen Brown campsite we had been told about the other day. Our trail now climbed uphill, and we took one last look at our amazing campsite. A series of switchbacks kept us going higher, giving us a better view of the lake. The views seemed to inspire the musician in Robbie. Ryan is the traveling musician. <laughs> Today, the green moss, blue water, and auburn leaves looked especially vibrant in the bright sunlight and popped with color against the early spring woods. From the hilltops, we could see something along the shore in the distance. Do you think that's a boat or is that like a dock or something? I was wondering the same thing. I think it's another barge or something. It looks like a flatline barge. There's probably a dock that it goes out to, but it reminds me of the boat that we saw last night. What are those big, like, cylinders? I don't know. And in the trees above, we saw a downy woodpecker pecking on some tree branches. As we hiked, we noticed our water supply dwindling. We're gonna wanna fill up on water, so if you guys see any water coming up, let me know. Yo, it really does look extremely dry. Hmm, water prospects are not good. Though we didn't see any water, Andrew did spot some more spring wildflowers. So as I'm hiking, I'm noticing a bunch of other spring plants. Uh, one of them is bittercress, which is in the mustard seed family. It's got a really small flower with four petals. The other one is Spring Beauty, uh, the classic spring flower that you always see popping up late March, early April, uh, both of which are actually edible. So if you were a goat, you'd be really happy here. <laughs> yeah. We continued hiking on. We came to an open section in the woods that had some greenery growing from the leaf litter. What are these uh, bamboo shoot looking leaves over here? My guess is that it is a, uh, some sort of like invasive river cane species. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's definitely some sort of grass-like plant. <laughs> looks like eucalyptus, that's what I was trying to say. It does kind of look like that from a distance to a layman. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna collect some of this bark while I can. So we got tinder for tonight. Andrew and I continued on, though the others had hiked far ahead. So it would seem that Brian and Nicole have left us completely in the dust. And it looks like this landscape is very dusty and we're not going to have any place to fill water. But man, I love, I love wide sweeping forest landscapes like this. There's just so many different factors combined to form like a perfect day for me and they're all happening today. <laughs> nice bird sounds, nice uh, tufted titmouses chirping in the distance, nice big open sprawling leafy hills. I love those bird sounds. Like, is that as nostalgic to you as it is to me? Oh yeah. Yeah, like, it's so like much a, like just being in the backyard. It's like a Saturday morning, like through the window. Summer break. Nostalgia is a powerful force. And for us, spring is one of the times of years where it's felt most strongly. And while things are always in flux, having natural areas like this will always help us remember the best memories of days spent outside and let us create new memories like that for future generations. Eventually, we came to an intersection with a gravel road, where we found Brian and Nicole resting. We can try those, uh, 
After a brief break for snacks, we continued hiking. The gravel road led us to a paved road. After going down the road for a bit, we were back in the woods. Here, we found a small bit of water pooled up in a creek bed. Oh, you're about to we're talking about how it's stagnant, but it's clear. Good question. I mean, that looks pretty good. I think it's the best we've seen. I think it's the best we're gonna find. Okay. The water wasn't exactly flowing, but we felt comfortable drinking it with our filter. The water's really good, so that was a success. <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys feeling about this spring weather? Oh, I hope it stays. All I know is that it's gonna be real good sleep tonight, man. It's not supposed to even get below 50. Dude, I feel like we've not gone very far and I'm already really tired. Yeah, there's some days where looking forward to the campsite right after you leave the campsite, <laughs> it's just a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. This trail seems to be largely mountain bikers. I've never done that before, but it looks really difficult. I mountain biked with Thomas one time and we were on the beginner trail and every turn was just like, how are people not constantly like flying off and dying. <laughs> but also biking uphill on a trail like this sounds awful. <laughs> we definitely saw a few people struggling. Hey, we're struggling real good. Tower, Tower Hill. Down a ways on the trail, we saw a large radio or cell tower stretching high into the sky. was an interesting sight to see. But up ahead we found a trail sign that, oddly enough, advertised Fig Newtons. What on Earth? Earth? So weird. <laughs> Fig Newtons this way. <laughs> we also came to an intersection and considered splitting up to see more of the trail, okay. but decided to wait until further up to do so. We stopped a bit ahead to have some more snacks and to discuss our plan further. So we're debating whether we're gonna split up at point number nine on the map. Not for any other reason than just to see more of the trail. And we'd meet back at number six. I just wish I'd brought a pair of shorts. They get really warm, it's kinda nuts. I'm not complaining though, because I'm so happy that it's nice weather finally. Mm -hmm. It is so good to be outside after a long winter. My God, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. We also tried some deer jerky. Very good. This is kind of how I remember deer jerky tasting when I first tried it. One of my dad's friends gave us some. Robbie was uh, feeling the sun on the back of his neck and he didn't want to get burned, so I guess he fashioned himself up a little outfit. The woods engulfed us as we hiked away from the lake and further into the forest. We eventually came across an open, grassy meadow. Then, a little up the way, we came to the next trail junction, where we would split up. So, uh, Robbie and Nicole, you're gonna take the long way on the main path. Me and Brian will be going straight onto the A path. How many miles is our path? Like 1.2. And this one's 0.5, so. I'm sure we'll see you guys in like 30 minutes tops. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see you guys. See you guys, yeah. Let us know what you find at the north end. <laughs> and so we parted our ways. Brian and I went on a path of yellow blazes. Is it bad that I want to go extra fast to beat them there? <laughs> Nicole and I headed north, 
on a longer trail, which continued along the lake and eventually came to a parking lot. Look at the green that is starting to show up. Ooh. Signs of spring. I like it. Makes me really happy. Thank you. Y'all have a good hike. All right, you too. There were several mountain bikers beginning their ride for the day. Thank you. Eventually we came to the trailhead. We were hustling and we were making good time. We split up at nine and they went up this way. We're going this way. Yes. So we're at eight right now, right? Hood. It's been 11 minutes. The likelihood of us beating them is pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right you ready? Yeah. We, on the other hand, we're taking our sweet time. So the question is, are we actually going to see anything interesting here? I don't think so. They're going to be near the lake shore, so I think they'll see some more interesting stuff. Yeah, I wonder if these connector trails, like, do they actually choose cool places, or is it just a convenient place for a connector trail? It definitely looks like the kind of trail that isn't used by bikers, so. Yeah, you can already tell it's less used. There's, like, leaf litter on the trail and stuff. Yeah. Already, the landscape around us was subtly changing. We're kind of going through a brambly, scrambly part, but now it's opened up again, so this is kind of nice at least. We've already done half of the trail of the shortcut or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and honestly, like, I feel like if we whoop loud enough, they'd probably hear it. <laughs> we could <can> try. <laughs> whoop, whoop! Huh. I didn't hear anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice part of the trail, though. This is... It feels like well-maintained. Yeah. Not, I don't know if that if it is well-maintained, but I guess because there's bikers and stuff, you know, it has to have a certain level of maintenance done to it. Plus it's uh, like just the season means there's nothing overgrowing or anything. Yeah. Whoa, what's that over there? There's like power lines or something. I think we're near the road. Oh. Yeah, we're about to cross the road. Oh, that makes sense. So that's probably it. As we made our way to the road, the others had also come to a road. Okay, now... Where is the trail? <laughs> That's a very good question. Ooh. Yeah, that looks... that looks right. Oh, yep. Yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah. As we made our way back into the woods, we could see the canal to the north of us that the trail loop is named after. Up ahead was a bridge for cars spanning across the canal. The trail eventually went right along the shore and passed underneath the bridge. Down here, we saw a whole slew of colorful graffiti that added life to the steel and concrete structure. Can you imagine the stones it would take to walk across that tiny, tiny little walkway to do graffiti over there? Oh, dude, that's how they're doing it? Yeah, you could walk on that platform there. Go all the way out there, wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool, but that ain't me. <laughs> Eventually, we got back into the woods, where we again saw an open meadow just past the forest. I feel like I'm in my backwoods. Yeah, feels like that. The path had led us to a small maintenance road. It then went back into the woods and emerged in an open area where power lines stretched for miles above us. So as you're walking underneath these power lines, you can hear the electrical buzzing. And it's kind of freaky, actually. It makes me a little unsure about it. <laughs> Is your hair being raised or anything? No, no. But I'm like wondering if it's like screwing up the electronics or something. Yeah, hopefully the audio will come through. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's very audible. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. All right, I don't really want to stand under this too long. <laughs> Get them radioactive waves. <laughs> <laughs> the buzz of the power lines was surprisingly loud. We continued past them, onward to our rendezvous point. I think we beat them because I think I see an A in the distance. <laughs> Even with our multiple stops, <laughs> we still beat them. Not bad. Oh. Maybe they saw something really interesting on the way. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Otherwise. Yeah, or they're hiding from us. I find that less likely. <laughs> we had arrived at the meeting spot and Nicole's phone suddenly rang. 
Something's rain. My butt. Brian. Is it him? <laughs> Aloha. Hey, where's your guys location? We are at the junction of A and B. Is your yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, could you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. See you soon. All right. Bye. So what was our final time? Oh, we probably got here two minutes ago. So about 35 minutes. Okay. We're close on our estimate. Yeah. Brian and I crossed over the road that stretched over the bridge the others had just passed underneath. Then it was back into the woods for our reunion. That was kind of like... Ridiculous how fast you were, but also when you told me you were there, I realized we were like literally right there. I was like, oh, we're not that far either. <laughs> we were taking our time though, yeah. Brian. Uh... Like the minute we you guys split off, I was like, I'm gonna go poop. <laughs> 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 Brian took, yeah, he did a number two immediately after we got on the trail. We're like, yeah, yeah, they'll probably still be hiking. And I was like, man, right when we cross that street, that street, and we can see the bridge, maybe they'll be crossing too. So that's when I called you guys, and then you guys we went like, we're done. It. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's really cool. There's graffiti all over it. Oh, man. Yeah. Now reunited, we continued and saw a strange log scored with marks. You suppose this is just a big bench? Yeah, it could be. So since it's flat and it's got grooves cut in it, it looks like it might have used as like a, been used as a path as one, at one point. That's probably for if this gets flooded, maybe? Oh, yep. Yeah, oh, you can no, see no, it. Those are bikes. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Man, riding like a bike there. on that, though. Okay, so is the current plan to look for the next campsite and just stop there? Yes, please. Okay, yes. Well, unless you guys want to go all the way to the lake. It mostly depends on if we can even find a campsite because they haven't been that plentiful. Chances are there's going to be a higher chance of finding a campsite by the lake anyways. That's true. So that may be when we find our first campsite. As we hiked through an open section of the woods, a white-tailed deer got spooked by us and nimbly leapt away. We continued across a small mountain biking log. We noticed the shadows of the trees stretching out longer and longer as the evening sun began to sink. A little up the trail, we came to another intersection with the opposite end of a connector trail that we had passed by earlier. Eventually, the trail came to another opening with power lines. Then, it went along another open meadow, this one more vast than the others. As we peered out into the meadow, we could hear more chorus frogs calling all around us. We kept hiking and came across a few interesting things along the way. It's funny when you look at a tree, there's all these different splashes of color and you never really think about what that actually is. You just think, oh, it's bark. But up close, this tree has little white splotches and this is actually fungi. When you look up close, you can tell that each of those white spots is the pore surface of a fungus. So this is a wasp gall, but it kind of looks like a fruit if you didn't know any better. Both of these have already released whatever was inside. But if you actually cut this open, well, first of all, it has like a very papery kind of styrofoamy texture. But on the inside, there's like this network of lines going into the center. Although this one looks like it's so old that you don't really see the clean lines. But when you get a fresh one, sometimes you see these like very distinct lines going right towards the center. Robbie and I had again gotten separated from Nicole and Brian. As we continued, we could see the lake in the distance. Eventually, we saw Brian and Nicole across an inlet in the lake. No campsites yet? In the lake, we saw another cylinder where barges could dock, and what seemed to be an island made of debris. The sun started to set as we hiked into the inlet before we made our way back towards the lake. Okay, they were about here when we last saw them. Still no sign of them. You don't see them up ahead, do you? No, not yet. It's like a little boat dock or something over here. So is this listed on the map? No, I know where we are though. We are around here right now. 
The trail emerged into a small overlook where the shore seemed to have been eroded away. It's very pictured rocks esque. Don't suppose we could camp here, could we? <laughs> As we looked around us, we heard the others whoop in the distance. So we whooped back. Whoop whoop! Well, we just heard uh, Brian whooping at us. Whoop. Whoop! We could hear them in the distance telling us to keep going, just like they had the previous evening. Oh! No, oh, they, they, oh, 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 those are magic words! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man. What a lovely view. <laughs> <laughs> Music to my ears! <laughs> You know, I was just thinking earlier, I really want a hilltop campsite with a nice view of the lake. It's like we're getting that. <laughs> but from this hilltop site, we could see what might have been an even better campsite on the next landmass. So Brian and Andrew headed over to see if we could camp there instead. We were pretty set on going there, but we saw that uh, you actually need a basic camping permit to camp there. So me and Brian are just gonna take a quick stroll over there and check it out and see if there's anything that could work for us. It's like if we could just camp at that campsite, would you want to? Because it almost seems like too developed. See, that was my thought. I was like, mm, do we actually want to stay at like that developed site? But at the same time, it's just like, might as well not rule out the option. There were a couple ruin anemones growing too. That's the first time I've seen those this year. This place actually isn't that far, but when you have to hike all the way in for these inlets, it feels a lot longer, you know? Eventually, we emerged at the campground and began investigating. It looks like there's a little firing right in the middle here. It doesn't leave much for hammocking, though. I mean, it's not the most wildernessy spot, but it might be kind of nice. What do you think? Well, let's check the edges first before we make a decision. Yeah. The firing in the middle of the grass seemed interesting. But when we checked the rules, we confirmed that we needed a different permit to stay in this area. On the plus side, a friendly little house cat came bouncing out of nowhere to say hello. And both to our dismay and delight, the cat kept following us as we headed back onto the trail. If we had tents, like I would totally just be down to just yeah. put up our tent here in the middle of the field. Cat's just following us now. As much as we enjoy the companionship of a cat, domestic cats kill billions of wild songbirds every year. So we didn't want it to get lost in the woods with us. Hopefully this cat doesn't follow us because we have nothing for it. <laughs> it's still following us. Mm -hmm. This cat is very persistent. <laughs> The persistent furball even followed us onto the trail, so we tried scaring it off. I'm sorry, cat, but we cannot take you with us. The forest is not the place for you. You'll just kill a bunch of songbirds, probably. I want to make it clear that we attempted to get rid of this cat as best as we could. And if it just happens to follow us back to our campsite of its own volition, we are not responsible for that. But we will play with it if it comes back with us. <laughs> Eventually, the cat turned back and we kept on. Along the way, I found an odd object. This is the third one of these hard things that I found. I think this is kind of like the fish bones we saw earlier at our first camp. This is really big, but maybe it's just like from a fish that's in the lake that either got washed up here or got picked up by a hawk and then eaten and dropped. Back at camp, Andrew shared his report of what they saw. There was a cat, though. It almost followed us, followed us halfway back. <laughs> so earlier, Robbie found this skull lying on the, in the ground here. Looks like some sort of a medium-sized rodent. So this is uh, obviously the cranium, and this is the top part of the, the jaw. And then this is the bottom jaw right here. But this would have been connected here somehow. I don't know, maybe a possum or something? I mean, these look like, I don't know what these would be, but to me it looks like the kind of gill part of a fish. I, was I mean, I can easily see that because it could be a big hawk or something. Yeah. Brought it up here to eat. I was finding pieces of this all along the trail, and then this thing here 
Uh, I'm not sure what this would be. Is that a sea creature or a mammal? That, that still looks like a part of a fish maybe, right? No, that looks like a mammal. Yeah? Yeah, because that's like a back. But over here, there is a definite fish spine or something. Right here. Oh yeah, there, look, there's another fish rib here too. You see that? There must just be uh, hawks like soaring through here all the time, dropping fish all around. What is this too? There's like another vertebrae here. Yeah. After our little forensics investigation, we set up camp for the night. A barge hummed by, and a golden moon soon illuminated our quiet forest retreat. We were running low on fuel, so we cleared away an area and dug a pit for a small campfire. We started collecting some wood, and Andrew put down a platform for the fire. Tonight, Nicole would be starting the fire. I didn't want to hog all the fun, after all. We hadn't collected much tinder, so tonight we were using a bit of fat wood to get the fire going. Eventually, it ignited and we had our fire. Next, we filled our bucket with water and set it on the fire to boil. In the meantime, we sat down to share some sugary appetizers. So we got these candies that someone sent us, Melissa Poole. They're from Colombia. It's on the, written on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and she sent us a bunch of different ones. This one's Cortados. Dolce con leche tradicional con panela milk caramel. <laughs> and these are cubitos de dolce con leche. So I think uh, cubes of sugar and milk. <laughs> what I think that and what does that one say? Coffee delight. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well I'm gonna yeah. open one of these cubes. Let's yeah, let's start with these cubes. Oh, Whoa, that? it's so crumbly. Yeah, it seems crumbled. These were already cubed into four pieces. Whoa! Ours is like super crumbly. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god. It's like soft caramel with a sugary outside. Mmm. Oh I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. That is so good. I do too. That is not what I expected. <clears throat> it's got the caramel taste, but it doesn't have that <coughs> stickiness. These also feel a little soft too. They're not kind of like super hard. Glistening with sugar. <laughs> mm. It's kind of like a hard crumbly texture. Like, mm. They're similar. Like it's not as squishy, but as soon as you bite, it crumbles. Wow, this is good. Mm. It's interesting, interesting taste. Very caramel taste. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this has an uh, interesting sweet aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Columbia's got good candy. <laughs> oh, that's great for like re-energizing yourself after a long hike. Mm -hmm. Then we measured out our water and cooked our dehydrated meals. So while we wait for those foods to boil, we're gonna have another pre-dinner dessert. This is the coffee tink. delight. Tink, tink. They actually tink. tinked. Yeah. Tink. <laughs> like marbles. It is like a Mentos. Oh yeah. With squishy center. Not that bad, actually. Mm. I like it. Not getting any of that coffee delight, though. It's at the end. It's a little bitter at the end. You can taste the coffee. So what was your guys' favorite? First one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crumbly texture. Good texture, so good, good taste. These are great. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Melissa Poole. Tink. 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 I gotta put my headlamp on so I can see what I'm eating. <laughs> I can tell that I have not waited the full mm. period of time. No. <laughs> it is like rice soup. <laughs> Oh man, this is nice and saucy actually. This is like, look how chunky this is compared to, remember how liquidy it was last time? Mm. Maybe oh, we yeah. just used too much water. <laughs> Lasagna is the same thing I had at the final day of my Timberline Trail hike. Oh. It was good then, 
is good now. <laughs> You're not so bad, Beef Chili Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was sent by Ryan, Sam, and Alex and the doggos. And the doggos. Thank you. Mm. Oh man, this is so good. We enjoyed the rest of our food. When we finished it, we doused out our fire and got ready for bed. Above us, the starlight shined through the bare tree limbs. Beneath the light of the waxing moon, Robbie and I reminisced about our pastimes here. First time we went camping was with my brother. A couple years later, we decided we were going to start Adventure Archives. That was May 2013, I think. And we came here and we tried to film an episode. It was you, me, Brian, our friend Derek, and your friend... Sean. We did this exact loop, only we went the other direction, so we went counterclockwise. We got maybe, maybe a mile in. <laughs> and we were like, okay, well, let's just stop because the mosquitoes are too bad. And we camped in maybe the worst possible spot. Right next to the trail where it dipped down super close to the water and it was kind of moist and like a breeding ground for mosquitoes. It was a night just like this. It was like perfectly fine. We didn't expect it to rain. So right. me and Derek were in the tarp and we... we used both of our rain flies to cover the ends because of the mosquitoes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we plugged the ends <laughs> with the rain flies. So you were in one tent with Sean. Brian was in his own tent. Neither of them were covered. <laughs> <laughs> I was sleeping there and then I just felt the pitter patter and then I go, rain! And I remember waking up to Derek yelling curses and saying, rain, yeah. rain, rain. <laughs> it was just a bunch of F's and S's. <laughs> <laughs> so we scrambled, got the, the rain flies off the tarp, scrambled to get them on the tents, and we finally did. It was me, Brian, and Derek in one tent. Oh. <laughs> and I remember we were all crammed in there. And at one point I was lying there. I was like, this is weirdly not that uncomfortable and I fell asleep but and then afterwards we went back to Derek's apartment and we spent like two or three days there just watching Game of Thrones <laughs> tomorrow though on our way out we need to find that campsite I'm sure we'll be able to recognize it we just have to keep our eyes open this is definitely <laughs> significantly better this time around yeah this, is a good one. this has been an amazing trip actually yeah this trail held memories for us that at least through the rosy lenses of nostalgia, were quite fond for us. We were excited to find our old campsite tomorrow, to think back on the good times we had had. The next morning, we tore down camp shaking our gear rigorously to remove any bugs that might have crawled on overnight. <laughs> oh, I think that's enough. <laughs> After packing up, we did our part to leave no trace. Then, we grabbed our gear and headed out. We again hiked past the nearby inlet and saw more rue anemones. Then, we emerged again at the campground Brian and Andrew had scattered out. So this is where you guys came yesterday, right? Yeah. How that people kind of like drive their RVs up to it. Well, there's an RV there now. I wasn't there last night. I think in hindsight we made the right choice. It's nice being secluded in the woods. We were back on the trail, which began winding along the shore of the lake, whose waters looked brown on this overcast day. We began keeping an eye out for our old campsite at every bend in the trail. So this is definitely not where we camped, but I think we were in a very similar place because I remember there being trash I remember it being like really close to the lake, but also this tree with all the spiky balls dangling off of it, that's a sweet gum tree. I remember specifically taking footage of the leaves and just seeing them like contrasted against the evening sky. Well, wherever we did camp, it'll have some of these trees near the shore so we can keep an eye out for those spiky balls. Up ahead, we saw another fire ring which piqued our curiosity. Actually, where we camped was similar to this area. 
It was a little flatter though. Well, so where I think it is, somewhere around here is where we camped because we kind of camped on this like little indentation on the land, right? Yeah. But then I also remember there was a part of the trail that overlooked the lake because specifically, I remember Sean was spraying insect repellent on my legs while we were standing there, <laughs> which I think is right there. Plus that's not too far and I don't think we hiked very far. So once we get around here, we'll have to look. We continued hiking along the shore, our eyes peeled. We passed another sign labeled Vilsen Val and then hiked into another inlet. Here, the drab brown colors of the woods were contrasted by the green lumps of moss and the golden color of dried out beech leaves. The trail kept winding and we came to another junction. Is that a trash can? Sure is. Well, here's a piece of trash I can put it in. Where there's original. Wait, so there's two paths. One this way, one this way. So we do not remember seeing this last time, right? Yeah, definitely no big bridge. Which way are we going? This way or that way? No, this way. That's the connector path. Oh, okay. The bridge crossed a small stream with almost milky blue water. Then we came to another low-lying area. You don't suppose this is it, do you? I feel like this is too big, but... There is a fire ring here. Did we have a fire? We didn't have a fire ring. There's a... No, dude, I think this might be it. This could be. Could be, yeah. yeah. Get, I, I don't remember that. No, wait, maybe it was. There, maybe there was a ravine right there. No, I, I remember that. I remember there being a ravine, I think. This looks like it could be it, yeah. Because I kind of remember like our tent being here. Andrew and Derek were like set up here and you and Sean were like right there. Oh, this, yeah, this There's might have been it. There's a tree there too. Like just where I said there would be. Let's get a perspective over here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like you and Sean's tent was here. Me and Brian's were here. Yes, something. yes. And the tarp was over here. I think this is it. This was it. Yes, this looks so familiar right here. Yeah. Had to be it. Well, that makes me feel better because at least somebody else thought it might be a good campsite because they made a fire ring. I think that might have been there. <laughs> I vaguely remember having a fire when we were camping here. Did we make the fire ring? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, this, I think this was it. Yeah, because I, I do remember this ravine. Yeah, this looks pretty familiar. What do you think, Nicole? Do you think this was it? <laughs> yeah, sure was. <laughs> yeah, I remember walking up to here, kind of brambly, but I remember like looking at that sweet gum tree and just seeing the blue lake from here. The water level was definitely higher at the time, but I just remember it was like a dark blue evening. There were frogs singing the whole night. Man, that's crazy. Are painting a nice picture of it. <laughs> well, it was nice before the disaster. <laughs> a lot less mosquitoes too. It was May 2013. Filled with ambition, we found our way to land between the lakes, joined by our friends Derek and Sean. Right at the start of the trail, Andrew found a useful tree. We've got the sarsaparilla plant, and how you identify it is it's got these distinctive three prong leaves, but it's also got leaves with two or no lobes. And if you feel the bark, it smells like Fruit Loops. What does it taste like? Mm. Nothing really. It? Now we made our way onto the trail. The sunlight gleamed dreamily through the leaves, and flowers and mushrooms sprouted from the ground. Amid the greenery, we found some abandoned concrete structures that were overgrown with vines. The trail led us to an open area intersected by power lines. The moon hovered above in the blue sky. Wild rose and honeysuckles bloomed with flowers in this meadowy area. 
Up ahead was a small dirt roundabout looking across the lake. Above us were the green sweet gum leaves, and growing below was a false indigo plant. We continued hiking and came to an open area by the lake, where we decided to set up camp. Derek got to furiously what? chopping some wood with our hatchet. And as the others set up camp, I feathered some sticks for a fire. We all collected wood, desperate to get a fire going to ward off the many mosquitoes that were biting us. To spark the fire, I was using a built-in flint and steel on Sean's cheap survival knife. Predictably, it didn't work very well, so we resorted to using some matches I had. You found my striker. With the dryer lint and feathered sticks, we got a small flame going, but all the while the mosquitoes kept pestering us. These mosquitoes. You mosquitoes! <laughs> don't, don't put that in. <laughs> With the fire going, we finally found some solace. We roasted some kebabs of hot dogs and zucchini over the fire. Dusk fell as we congregated around the fire. We got ready for bed and I brushed my teeth with a sweet gum branch. Then, I helped Derek set up the tarp using our hiking poles. Before falling asleep, we stood near the water's edge, staring out against the evening's dark blue sky as the birds and frogs chirped the night away. And that was where our archive ended, before the heavy storm came down on us that night. But being in that environment reminded us of the full story. All throughout the landscape, there are clues that tell stories of the past. It's funny how certain things in the forest can tell stories. This looks like a winged burning bush to me, because these stems have these flat wings growing out of them. And you can kind of tell somebody chopped this down at some point, but eventually the stem started growing back. Yeah, this thing just kept living and all these shoots came out of the trunk all awkward like. <laughs> yeah, they look like little down feathers from some sort of a bird. Huh. Everything's getting eaten in the forest. We've seen multiple trees that have been cut all the way around in the bark, which actually kills the tree. And they're all sweet gum trees. So I'm wondering if maybe like somebody was trying to extract the sweet gum or something, or or maybe it's just like uh there's some infected disease going around and trying to kill the trees before they spread. I don't know. You can see there's a lot of like resin and sap dripping from the bark, so I wonder if that's got something to do with it. As it turns out, these sweet gums were girdled to allow for other trees that provide more resources for wildlife to grow. This must be the area where we were standing and looking over here and Sean was spraying the bug spray on the legs. Oh! Remember this, Andrew? Yeah, I do! Yeah, because I remember it being a road like this. Yeah, I remember the cul-de-sac kind of shape. What is that on the tree? Is that a bird? Whoa. Come look at this. Dang. There's an entire blue heron wing on here or something. Youch. Is this that same invasive tree you were talking about? It turned out that this tree and the one earlier were winged elms, native to the southern regions of the U.S. It was odd to witness the sort of death and decay alongside the beauty of the lake and the forest all around us. The landscapes around us tell stories. They conjure up memories and feelings from our past. And those memories and experiences teach us about ourselves and what we value in the world. But when those landscapes are at risk of being lost, so are those experiences. And any hope of re-experiencing them for ourselves or the next generation. Our time here brought back some memories of a good time spent with good friends. 
but at the same time, we noticed trash strewn in low-lying areas brought in from the lake waters. Unlike some litter left in a fire ring, this isn't any single person's fault. It's a problem that happens at a societal level, one that we have no control over as an individual. And sometimes, it can feel like the world is full of these sorts of problems. But when we face these problems, we come together. We can pick up a few pieces of litter in the woods, but to fix the underlying issue, we have to act collectively. As hikers, we focus on leaving our trails and campsites better than how we found them. We need to think this way on a larger scale if we want people to have the same cherished memories and experiences in their lives that we've had. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember Derek or something climbing onto one of these. Yes. Things. Yeah. Yes. What does a piece of litter matter if an entire forest is cut down? What is graffiti on a boulder when an entire mountaintop is removed? There's so much beauty to be cherished in the world. Yet in this weird walk of life, we face problems that can make the world seem ugly. Problems that make us afraid we might lose the things we love. But the silver lining is that these problems make us re-examine ourselves and our society. They make us change what we're doing now so that we can leave the world off with a better future. The world has never been perfect. Sometimes, things seem like they're getting worse. The sounds and smells of spring take us back to the better days. But the better days don't just have to be in the past. If we think about what we're doing today and how we can do things better, we can still build a better tomorrow for everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. You can get access to weekly live streams, in-depth updates, bloopers, commentaries, and more. We've also got t-shirts available, including our latest design by Thomas, the gateway to the Sierras. As always, thank you so much for watching. Okay, we're going to Taroni's Pizza in Evansville to have lunch, the post-hike meal with all of our Evansville buddies, who are very numerous for some reason. Oh! Your road, my friend. Who is this? That's true, yeah, don't Danny has the crowd. <laughs> don't touch me. Uh, you don't have anyone on the side. You're over 21, right? I feel like 64 degrees.
How's that pizza? Oh my god. Buffalo chicken. Amazing. <laughs> so this is Eric. He's, we play video games a lot. And he always gets drunk on Friday night. And when he gets drunk, he's super easy to convince to do things. Especially spend money. So one night, <laughs> I, convinced him, wrong. I convinced him to join our patron at a hundred level, hundred dollar level donor. And I stayed that way for three months. You stayed that way for three months, yeah. Brian's Mesa build is terrible. <laughs> Pizza was delicious, but you know, we need a little something extra and I think Nicole, she nailed it on the head. What are we going to eat? We are going to get some ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> this is Dutch chocolate for my Dutch friends out there. With banana, coconuts. Yeah. That's an interesting combination. Yeah. How can that I don't know, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> Caramel praline. Coconut, mint chocolate chip. Cookie dough. Okay, so what happened was, is my dad was like, yo, let's go to Dairy Queen and pick up chicks. Just as a joke. Yeah. And then so we were all in on it too. We were like, yeah, yeah, let's go to Dairy Queen and pick up chicks. And then so we were telling Andrew this, but he was like four or five. So in his mind, we were really going there to pick up chicks. Mm -hmm. And he had like his do-rag on and everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, you remember we remember that we were on the ba bandana phase? <laughs> so we go Sick in there bandana. and we just ordered the ice cream and everything. And Andrew was like legitimately asked, he's like, so where are the chicks that we're gonna pick up? <laughs> and then years later he found out that it was just my dad being a goofball. <laughs> I'm so disappointed that there were no chicks. <laughs> Oh, wow. So I'm just like, I'm gonna buy. I'll see you buy. in the apocalypse. I'll see you. I'll see you online. Am I not gonna matrix. make it in the apocalypse, Rob? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> we gotta start planning for the apocalypse. <laughs> 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 And I was like, nah, there's no way. They're on the road already. We'll just, whatever. So this is my cousin's husband. And he was supposed to come to pizza, but he got kids, so he's busy. I'm driving down the road. Like, hi, Brian. I think that's Chris. You can call him cousin. It's Chris and I was like, oh. just, just pick a, a familial relation. You can call cousin, him. uncle. Gamer man. Yeah, spiky bride. Old man. You want to hold you? <laughs> You're gonna be on a video, I guarantee it. I'll show you the video later. Hello, Hi, I'm cool. Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. I'm uh, Robbie's cousin-in-law. I'm Brian and Andrew's double cousin-in-law. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm telling you, Evansville is the next- Meanwhile, you caught me on video headbanging because the system of a yeah, down was yeah. on the radio. <laughs> we right? were like, he was like honking, you are like- Yeah, I like overdo it with him, you know what I mean? Like get him into it. Uh -huh. And so yeah, system of a down, get him on the radio. I'm like, oh, this song rocks. And he goes, rocking, right? <laughs> and you know, in your head, you're like, well, no one knows you, just be yourself, you're in the car, and then sure enough, now I'm on YouTube, headbanging. <laughs> see ya. See ya. I'm, I'm glad it worked out, actually. Got to see Can't drop the ball at the very end. All right, see you guys. Right. See, ya. see ya. Another good trip. Yep. Have a good night. You too. Good seeing you, Nicole. Yep, you too. I don't envy you that three hour drive, but... <clears throat> I don't envy me either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. See ya. That's painful. I had three pupils. The first one was John Truitt. He was known as the Snake Spirit. He had the speed of a snake. Snake style is known for its incredible agility. Agility and speed. The second one, Lisa Truitt, practiced the scorpion style. This style resembles the scorpion pincer. 
The second one never met the third, but she knows the first. The third pupil, Lin Chen, he practiced the toad style. The toad style is immensely strong and immune to nearly any weapon. When it's properly used, it's almost invincible. It can even bend solid metal. Cooper, you are not specialized in any one skill because I chose to teach you all three techniques. I, Charlie Joe, have not taught you all that I could, but time has run out. You must find the three venoms and figure out which ones are good in their heart and which ones are evil. This is Tan Leader, standing by. Golden Leader, do you stand by? Golden Leader, you're not making that much sense. Let me see if I can get that right. Are you saying, Jason Bourgeois says, shout out to Sierra, the Wonder Dog. Okay then. Nice shot, Jim Potts! That's one in a million! <coughs> Jasper Caparoto, do you copy? I'm getting a special request from Tom Squadron. Tom wants to thank Steve, Connie, Gretchen, and Steve for building the cabin of his dreams up in Cody, Wyoming. I don't know about you guys, but once I'm done with this battle, I'm going to be heading to Cody, Wyoming for some rest and relaxation. How's everyone doing? As you know, I'm Les Bird, and we've been having a hard time surviving. It's day 21 of the COVID-19 quarantine, and all I can think about is how I want to give a shout out to Megan Bird, but I'm stuck in here, so we just gotta keep on surviving. Now, when you're in a quarantine situation, one of the most important things is making sure you're well stocked on food and sometimes food can be the hardest thing to come by so you gotta take what you can get looks like we got some fresh bird eggs sometimes i have to think of the words of my good friend ann mcbride you know beggars can't be choosers so we'll go with this now one of the most difficult things when you're trying to survive like this is combating boredom and cabin fever Fortunately, we have things like Netflix and Hulu. But for me, I like to go to where my friend Aaron Jones likes to go, which is the Adventure Archives Discord server, and chat it up with all those people. Lord help us if the internet goes down, though. Last night, I gotta say, it's pretty comfortable, actually. I don't think I've had a shelter as good as this one. But honestly, you know, I could probably make do with a, a little less space trying to keep that warmth. Sometimes I wonder if... I would be doing better if I had my gear from Expedition Research LLC. Maybe. Maybe. Hello, I'm Rob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 28th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us today, I'd like to extend a personal invitation to grab your paints and your brushes and paint along with us each show. And if you've been here before, well, thank you for your continued Patreon support. I'll tell you what, let's get started. Let's start with a little two-inch brush and start with a little Salvador Gonzalez red. And we just load a little bit right into the bristles, just like that. And just make little X's, little crisscross strokes. We'll just drop in the warm part of the sky here. I sort of like that. In our world, we can do anything. And without even cleaning the brush, let's go into Johann Gurgiev Gray. I know S11N would like that. And if you want to make the indication of a happy little cloud, all you do is tap. Just like that. All you do is tap. And there you go. As Dan Vulcan says, look around. Look at what we have. Beauty is everywhere. You only have to look to see it. And I'll see you next time. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless my friend. Mm. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, he's just been making noises in the background the whole time. <laughs> that's that's gonna be Robbie tonight in the, in the tent. <laughs> he's gonna be dreaming about stuff, food. He's gonna be like, mmm. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't possibly eat another bite, but why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <why> not? <laughs>